Hello everybody. Um, our third talk of the afternoon is entitled, So You've Got a Design, Now What? I'm delighted to introduce Malcolm Walker, who will give the talk. Thank you. Thank you. Well, if you have a look at the, at the menu of the talks programme down there, and you attended my talk because you think it's only going to be five minutes, you're out of luck. <laughs> it's a typo. It's 10 to 15. I'll try and keep it under an hour. OK. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for attending. Firstly, I'd like to thank the Furniture Makers Company uh, and Johnny Westbrook for the opportunity to sponsor this prize. And in the next 15 minutes, hopefully, you'll find it worthwhile. The title, as you can see, is, So You've Got a Design, Now What? Well, it could be, or even, So What? It, so What is my favourite saying, because it tests everything you do or you say. So what? Because if you can't answer that question to yourself, the chances are you won't be able to answer it from anybody else. And maybe you haven't thought it all the way through. So what? What's the value? Where's the angle? Where's the future? Who's it for? But before all of that, who the hell am I and why should you listen to me? Well, my name is Malcolm Walker. Um, I was the buying director and uh, product uh, director at uh, Furniture Village for many, many years, up until 2018. For the last five years, I've run my own consultancy business called First MW Limited. It's a progressive company, I think, working with industry-leading businesses, of which Sterling Home uh, Group is a retailer in Scotland are one, and Nicoletti Home, a fine leather manufacturer in Italy, is another. Along with other leading brands in the UK, Europe, I work in the USA and Asia. I work on product design, development, and concept realisation. Prior to this, I spent 20 years with the Maple Waring and Gillow Group. If you're too young, ask your mom and dads, and if you, or your grannies and your grandmas, and they'll tell you what Maple's Waring and Gillow are all about. But it was one of the bastions of this, of this industry. I had various roles from sales consultant to store manager, making the move into buying in 1987 while managing the flagship store in Maple's in Tottenham Court Road. Um, I then moved into group buying with, with Maple's when it was acquired by Asda and, and Allied Carpets where I became buying director prior to joining Furniture Village in 97, where I stayed for 20 years and became a buying director and a shareholder until 2018. I think it's really relevant that the pillars of, of the furniture makers is education, excellence, and welfare. Because I want to talk to you about my industry and my education. I've been so lucky with my education, and that's what this industry did for me. It educated me from the years of 15 years of age until I'm never now. And now I still learn every day. And if I don't, it's my fault. I'm not looking, I'm not listening. I'm not looking, I'm not listening enough. So I wanted to give some, something back to this great industry of ours that's given me so much. And we need talent. And we need to keep the talent. And we need you. My education started in the 70s when I joined Waring & Gillow. Manny Cousins was the owner in those days, father of Andrew Cousins of Sofas and Stuff and the founder of Sofa Workshop. They taught me the value of a pound. They taught me how to trade, plus standards, standards, standards. And I still get the shivers now if I see a light bulb out in a shop or a restaurant. And so did my family because they go, here he goes, he's about to go off on one. In Maples was bought by Waring and Gillow in 1980. And they taught me, and on the Maple side, they taught me about style and presentation and drama and technical and passionate ways in which to talk about beautiful products. I managed Maples in Tottenham Court Road in the late 80s, and it was one of the top five furniture stores in the world there. And it was an education, and that's where I got into buying. I then spent 20 years at FV, Furniture Village, with Peter Harrison and, and David Emery, the founders. And when David retired, what a horrible word retired is, by the way, uh, I took over for him in, at Furniture Village and I called it my finishing school. When I was a buying director and a shareholder, they taught me how to pull it all together, to buy, to tell, and to sell, and it's a winning formula. So where do you fit? First, you've got to decide who you are, I think, as a designer. What type of designer are you? At what level do you want to work? Niche or volume? In many cases, and there's some good designers in this room today, in many cases, one leads to another, but volume, Volume changes our lives. So research, benchmark, listen, learn, look everywhere for direction, inspiration, every day, because it's out there. If you've got a black phone now, you probably had a white phone or a gray phone before. 
If you've got a white car now, you'll probably have a dark co uh, a car next time because opposites make trends. It's a bit of a simplifica oversimplification, but hopefully you'll get my point. When I left Furniture Village, Peter Harrison said to me, you've got 45 years experience, now 50. Write a book, do something, pass it on, because if you don't, it's criminal. So here we go. Designers, I've been lucky in my career. I met some of the great designers over the years, and some not so great, but I learned a lot from both. But the great ones all had one similar DNA. They were not precious, sometimes courageous, adaptable, and they made it their business to know their customer and what he or she was looking for. And they always, always had a plan B. The best and most commercial designers, the best in my or our field, know the price of success and the price of failure. When a buyer invests in a product, and that's what they do buyers, they invest in a product, they want a return on their investment for them and for their business that they are designing for. So my advice is clear. Understand the cost of both success and failure. But the cost of product is vital so you don't make fundamental commercial mistakes. So how can I help? And how can this prize help you and help our industry? It's not for me to teach you how to design. You know that. You won a prize. You qualified. But I can show you a route to success. And like a good sat-nav, I can make your journey smoother faster, and that's why we've called it the Fast Track Prize. The reality of supply and demand, the reality is without demand there is no supply. You, as designers, are very important cogs in a machine that creates demand. Very, very important. But my advice to you is you need to become a chameleon. You're a designer who needs to think like a manufacturer and then think like a buyer, and then think like a retailer, and then think like a consumer. So do your research, do your benchmarking so that you don't. You don't design things that your manufacturer can't make. You don't design in quality that can't be achieved or afforded. You don't specify materials that can't be used, afforded, or are unsustainable in this environment that we live in today. And don't design stuff that your client can't sell because it's too early or it's too late. Go back to your benchmarking and your research all the time. I sound like I'm preaching, but I am a bit, uh, really, because I believe in this stuff. And don't let your personal taste or bias get in the way. As a buyer, I've had to buy amazing things over the years that I've really loved. I've also had to buy some things that I haven't really loved, but they sell just the same. Don't. Don't let your personal bias get in the way. Always, 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 always think about the manufacturing process. There's some manufacturers in, in, in the room here, but always think about the manufacturing process. Spend as much time as anybody will let you talking to the people who are gonna make your stuff because they will tell you the truth. The people who make it will tell you the truth. It might be brutal, and it probably will be, but you'll learn something from it every single time you talk to the guys and girls that's gonna make it. Always think about the guys who are gonna sell your product to the retailer, so you understand what they need. Give them the magic, give them the magic. And then the guys that are gonna deliver it, maybe assemble it, is it easy, does it work? The next point I'm really passionate about, always use the correct language when talking about furniture furniture parts or a product as a whole because the language that you use, the lexicon that you use, it adds value to product and it's needed. Think about it, about perfumes and creams and cars and wines and how they talk about those sort of things. I mean, who the hell knew that one day putting hyaluronic acid on your face would be a good thing? But it's a word that we all never knew anything all about, but it's a good thing. So think about using the right language all the time because it adds value for you and for your, your manufacturer. Always, always think about the competition. All competition. Then make sure you and your product are better than the competition. Always think about the sales teams too. In store that are gonna sell your product, they need some magic to work with too. So think about what are they gonna say to the, the end consumer. And then always, always think about the end consumer because if they don't want it, we've got a problem. So what can this prize offer you? It can offer you experience, 
foresight, knowledge, and a methodology of working at the highest commercial level that works. I'm not trying to sell you what I think is a great idea. I know this works because I know what didn't work because I've made all the mistakes that you can make. So I know where the bodies are buried and I've kissed all the frogs. Back to so what. So what means you question yourself at every stage of the presentation as though the person you're presenting to is gonna say, so what? What they're really saying to you is make me believe. So you make sure you can answer it. Take away the ability for the client to say no to you and your design. So how can I help? Well, the fast track prize, there'll be an initial meeting with me, three or four hours somewhere in the UK, depending on where, where you live, explaining how to get the most out of the prize, and I will take you through a design process. And then what I call the Italian job, I'll fly you to Southern Italy for two to three days uh, to a manufacturer called Nicoletti Home, one of the original pioneers of the leather furniture industry in Matera in the south of Italy. You'll meet the founder, the owning family, You'll see product in it from drawing in a prototype department and see how a design becomes a product and comes to life. You'll see production in a factory and product being made. And then in a manufacturing showroom, we'll have a Q&A, feedback with the managers and a, bit, and a flight home. And you may just get some good food and wine along the way. I'd be surprised if you didn't. And then the retail environment. Be under no illusion. If someone don't sell it, there's no need for any of us. That's where it happens, in the retail environment. Of course, online, social media, digital platforms all play a big part. But we live in a touchy-feely industry where, thank goodness, many people still like to shop. And long may it continue. So I'll take you to a retailer in Scotland. I'll fly you to Edinburgh, and you'll visit two stores at the Sterling Home Group, the largest independent furniture retailer in Scotland. You'll see their Tillicoutry flagship store. And that took me a long time to learn how to say Tillicoutry. But you'll see their flagship store, which is the largest independent furniture store in the UK, some 250,000 square feet. There you'll see the product that you saw developed in Italy in a retail environment. You'll have discussion with buyers, managers, and sales teams about what makes a great product. The final session will be from me. And it's going to be called the magic of selling because I believe that selling is magic and there is magic in everything, every single product on this planet. There can be something magical found about it. And how this relates back to design. Following that, we'll fly back home. The follow-up will be access, accessible contact to me, mentoring, whatever is needed for advice going forward. And hopefully for you and this industry, a successful career but you've got to want it. You've got to want it. And want, combined with talent and knowledge and a little help along the way, and you've got a chance. Thank you for listening. Please feel free to catch up after the talks and good luck with your futures. And thank you.